Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não Let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause Dear friends, the greatest evangelist, the one who spread the good news to humankind, was the Lord Jesus. But the Lord Jesus didn't only inform people that God could do wonders, which was true, it would be enough, but he also provided people with guidance concerning what they should do. In John 8.31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, What did he say? If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Why did he say it to the Jews? Because the Jews were the people that um, they were amongst whom he lived. He was preaching the word to them and he had that promise that God had made to Abraham. If he were preaching to the Brazilian people today, he would be addressing us. If he were preaching to the Bolivians, He would be addressing them in Bolivia, no matter where. He would say the same thing concerning what they should do. He gathered that group of Jews that was his people and revealed the secret to them. Not all Jews believed him. Jesus said that to the Jews who believed in him, there were Jews who didn't believe. The priests didn't believe and even people from the poorest social class without any qualification didn't believe in him. Because you can believe regardless if you are poor, deprived of resources, or if you're rich and very wise. It's a spiritual revelation, so he would gather that group and reveal the secrets to them. What were the secrets? If you abide in my word, in that which you heard from him, in that understanding, it's for us today. I cannot despise that which I understood and hasn't still worked for me. Something must be missing. We have a good example from that, uh, that man, an example from a man who invented the light bulb, Thomas Edison. He experimented a thousand times until one day it lit up. He believed he would be able to provide light to the people instead of the oil lamp that they had been used to. He tried once, it didn't work, a hundred times and failed, nine hundred times and it flopped. But he felt that in his heart, that's what Jesus is saying, when you understand that a certain scripture is for you, believe. Maybe you will need some guidance, you'll always need guidance, but God will certainly assist you. He will help you to take action. So what did he say to the Jews who believed in him? If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Many deem themselves disciples of Christ. Maybe I'm one of them, you're one of them. But if we do not abide in the Lord's word, then as a matter of fact, we are not. We are friends who are people who want to do good deeds, we spread his word, but we're not making use of it. So we need to abide in his word so that we may truly become his disciples. And what will I receive if I become a true disciple? Verse 32, And you shall know the truth. Brethren, he who knows the truth is the Lord Jesus himself. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Only the true disciples of Jesus know the truth. And you can only be a true disciple if you're an individual who abides in the word of Jesus. It was his secret to the Jews. Do you believe in me? You may not be my disciples. You may have thought that you are, but you are not. So what do you have to do? You have to truly abide in my word. This is the secret. It's the secret for you, the secret for any individual. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And 
you shall know the truth. Then we will know the truth. But what's in it for us for knowing the truth? We will be free. He says that, and you shall know the truth. And the truth, not the prayer, not the weeping, and the truth shall make you free. It will give you the solution that you need and that when you do that, brethren, it's so very simple. You even laugh when you realize it. It's so simple, but you didn't get it. You made a vow to the Lord. You tried to bargain to make an agreement saying, if you give me this blessing, I will do this. God doesn't want anything from you. He is actually offering. It was Jesus who called the Jews from among all the others. You who believe in me, come here. I want to hold a private meeting. He did that. I will tell you a secret. A secret that will change your life. If you abide in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed. In other words, if you don't abide in it, you'll be pseudo-disciples. I have no commitment to you. I cannot teach the truth to you. If we don't have a firm spiritual structure, Jesus won't teach us because we will be an obstacle to this kingdom and it would be considered a failure to have been taught and incompetent. Dear brethren, it's very serious. We must ask the Lord God what he wants us to do and God will give us guidance in the name of Jesus. Let's see what God did in Curitiba. God bless those people a lot. Play the video. Brazil is in the World Cup mood, but it is Jesus' team that takes the field at the Paraná Club. And on that team, it is the Word of God that leads the game. If you have come here to seek the presence of God, to learn from Jesus, you can rest assured that the Spirit of God brought you. He will anoint you, and His anointing will be poured out on your life today, and you will be blessed. With the ministration of Lilian Lopez, the hearts of our brethren are warmed. And through faith, wonders take place. How long couldn't you bend over? More than 20 years. Over 20 years. How long could you bend over before the prayer? Just this. Just this. Now, in the name of Jesus, go. Bend all the way down. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This is awesome. I couldn't raise my arm. You couldn't raise this arm. The work is complete. I, I was working and I hurt my back. When was that? Around five years ago or so. You couldn't bend over? No. How low could you bend down without pain? And now? And now? <laughs> he even touched the floor. Let's applaud Jesus. Did you have a back problem? I have a problem For how my long? back. 15, 15 years. years. How low could you bend over before the prayer? I could barely bend down. That's it? Yes. So now, your name's Vanya, right? Sister Vanya, bend all the way down now. Is Jesus good, brethren? Let's applaud him. Pain in my back. On your back? Yes. Are you healed now? Thanks be to God. Did you have an accident and yes. you couldn't bend over? Yes. Can you bend over now? Yeah. So bend over for me to see. Isn't that amazing, brethren? What's your name? Manuel. Manuel. How long ago was the accident, Manuel? Ten years. Ten years. Show me how you were walking before, Manuel. Could you walk without it, Manuel? No. No. Who was helping you? My wife was. Where is your wife? Go hug your wife now. He's going to hug her. Glory to God. It's so beautiful. Jesus began to heal you today, Manuel. Glory to God. Oh, that's so beautiful. Jesus began to heal. Oh, that's so wonderful. Glory to God. He's very emotional. He's crying now because he felt he's healed. He used that walker and I helped him. He lost the balance. If an attendant, he could fall because he would walk fast, bump into objects and fall. Are you healed now, Manuel? Thanks to God. Don't walk fast. Start walking now. Walk normally. 
Have faith God is healing you. God heals you at every step you take. No need to hurry. Just walk normally. Straighten your body up now. Walk firmly. Because you're healed now. Amen? So Manuel, has God done his work? He has. Glory to God. Yes. Let's applaud Jesus. This is the beginning of the complete blessing in Manuel's life. Here in Curitiba, the shout of victory comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Let's applaud him, brethren. One of these days, someone sent me one of those videos we see on the internet. I, I don't know if it was in Vietnam, judging from the language, I think it was. I saw a person who was all locked up and he could barely bend over. Then someone got a plank and a rubber hammer and starting to hit him on his back. It was crazy, really. Then the man was able to bend over. I thought to myself, good Lord. Jesus can heal us without any hammer or anything. We just need to pray. And I thought, what if he injured one of his bones? The man would be crooked like this. It, <laughs> it was crazy. If you see that scene, it will scare you. Let's, <laughs> let's, <laughs> now, let's see what the faith show is doing throughout the world. Shall we? Each day, we have seen the growth of the gospel throughout the world. Today, Christ's message can be heard in 178 countries through our ministry. It is the Lord Jesus Himself who lifts up people to do His work. I was raised as a Muslim all my life. Um, but one evening, I was on Facebook. When I suddenly found your page, for the first time in my life, I heard about Jesus Christ. I felt a wonderful peace in my heart. I found courage and self-control for my life. Then I bought a Bible and I began to learn more about Jesus. My life started to be transformed and I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I'm thankful to God for you and for all your team. Dr. Suarez has been changing lives through the Faith Show and thanks to Dr. Suarez I have found salvation and so has my family. I was blessed, now I'm pregnant. I didn't even believe that was possible anymore. Glory to the Lord for that, I'm very happy. A huge team provides spiritual support to people with different types of problems in more than 20 languages. Through several digital platforms, the Lord's work is done and the commandment of going and preaching the gospel is fulfilled. Before giving my life to Jesus, I was a Muslim. In 2010, I found out about the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was given the opportunity to work in the faith show as an editor, it was when I heard the word and discovered how wonderful the Lord Jesus Christ is. I've given my life to Him. One day while watching Dr. Suarez's program, when he prayed for the viewers, he told a woman to put her hand on her breast because he had seen a lump on her breast. Then he said, Put your hand on your rib, sister. I did that. He prayed for me, and after a month, I tried to find the lump that I had on my breast, and I didn't find it. I had a stage 3 breast cancer. The cancer in my ribs was stage 3 as well. I was told it would never be healed. When I got the exam's results, there was nothing. I don't have breast cancer anymore nor rib cancer. I will be a sponsor of the Faith Show program. I will help it so that the program reaches more and more people, so that more sick people may be healed. We thank the Lord Jesus for what has been done so far, but we still have a lot of work to do. Don't turn your back on your calling. Help heal wounded hearts by leading others to find the transforming love you've already found. Jesus is counting on you to be a part of this wonderful journey. Oh, brethren, let us applaud Jesus. <laughs> brethren, the emotions that takes over my heart when I hear those testimonies are intense. Our commitment and responsibility are enormous as well because we have to do the work of God. Um, it is said that in a few years, 20 years, 30 years at most, France will become a Muslim country. England too. Why? Because Muslims are going there. Each woman has seven to 10 children. They have children who become citizens of that country. 
And as a result, Gaddafi, the ex-leader of Libya, once said that they would overtake Europe through women's wombs. It wouldn't be with weapons. And I get to thinking that we can do that in their land where they have been trying to uproot a very weak Christian community because they don't know the word of God. And also through the women's wombs, we can change their life because they have the problems that everybody have. The demon possessed are not delivered because there's no one to expel demons. They only leave in the name of Jesus. Sinners are not saved because there is no one to preach salvation and holiness to them. But we can do it and we're doing that. You who are sponsors, don't think about quitting. Even if the economic crisis increases, which has been very tough in our country right here because this work is a very holy one. It's a work that must never stop being done. God has assigned us with this mission. We'll be held accountable. Everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. Since we've received so many messages from the scriptures that gladden our hearts, God will demand from us the fulfillment we have still haven't fulfilled that which he told us to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. When people are converted, dear brethren, it is so beautiful. They're like the little children asking how to address God. They ask us to teach them how to speak to the one who's their father. That's what they tell us. 95% who follow me in the Arab world were not Christians. 600,000 people. God's doing an amazing work. At the beginning of the month, I'd like you to go to the bank and pay the sponsorship. Set it up as a top priority in your life. That which God has told you to do. Some people have stopped, but we cannot stop. We must never draw back. We must move forward in the name of Jesus. But if any of you has lost the bank slip, our bank is Ned Bank. Go up to the cashier and tell them this. I want to make a deposit in this amount to the branch number 103910. Again, it's 103910. The account number is 101191. 9540 101-191-9540. That's enough for you. The workers here are handing out the form to those who aren't sponsors yet, but have heard the calling. You may sign up today and this week you can make the deposit, the sponsorship, because we need to do it. 99% of the people here are sponsors. Um, the great majority of people are sponsors. So if you could sign up today, I thank you. You can bring the receipt and exchange it in the church for the Faith Show magazine. It contains articles that will gladden your heart. People in the know have forecast that within 10 years, we will be the vast majority in Brazil. They say we make up 33%. We're almost 40%. In the cities of Sao Paulo, Belo Horizonte, and Rio de Janeiro, we are the majority. And we keep growing in Curitiba, Vitoria, and Brasilia, we're almost the majority as well, or even more than 50% in other cities as well. The people are finding the truth and Jesus is being glorified. It doesn't matter what denomination you belong to. What matters is that you are serving the Lord Jesus wholeheartedly and if you abide in the words of God, you are his disciples. While they hand out the forms, how can people at home sign up to? Just give us a call in Cape Town, 21 plus 9115676. 27 plus 21 9115676. One more time, 27 plus 21 9115676. Make sure to write down these numbers. If you're a WhatsApp user, send us a message. Just like this. I want to be a sponsor. My team will give you a call. It's 27 plus. 0794969037. Now, let's read Deuteronomy 8. It contains a number of messages I want to study with you. The Lord God speaks to us in verse number 1. It's meant for those who are beginning and for those like me who have been a Christian for so many years. I always meditate on this scripture. 
every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. All of them. Pay attention to this. The commandments of God are divided into two major groups. The negative and the positive ones. The negatives. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not do this and this and do that. And, and the positive ones. Preach the gospel. Uh, in, in his name you shall cast out demons and do the works that he does. The works that we should do. All of them. Um, they do. They concern us. They're common to each one of us. And there are the personal commandments. What are the personal ones? The ones you feel in your heart. Some feel they should be sponsors. It's God speaking to them. He doesn't say that to everyone. That's why I say, if you don't feel it, don't sign up for it. But if you feel it and don't obey, it's not my problem. And if you were called obeyed and quit, it means you didn't persevere. Don't you think that God's work is all fun and games all the time? We've gone through difficult times. Times when we said to God, Lord, we have come this far. We can't go any further. No way. Then God opened doors. He puts us to the test, brethren. We do struggle. Not to mention some unpleasant things that happen. Sometimes things we have to endure. We cry before the Lord. Become someone like Demas did to Paul. It's in the Bible. He abandoned his ministry to serve the world. It happens sometimes. So it's written here. Every commandment, positive or negative, personal or common to everyone, which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. You must observe every commandment, not only to remember them, but to comply with them and say, God spoke to me. Oftentimes, I'm feeling drowsy in the small hours. God wakes me up instead of saying, not today, Lord. I say, I am ready, Lord. I wait a while. It's not good to rush to the bathroom when we wake up. It's not good. It's not good for our health, brethren. When we wake up, doctors have said that our body was asleep. It was resting. If you dash out of bed, you may have a serious problem. So I go to the bathroom. I wash my face, comb my hair, brush my teeth, take off my PJs and put on my clothes. Then I go to the living room to pray to God. It's a commandment. I feel it in my heart and I thank the Lord. Glory to God for that. It's a true blessing. What else does he say here? What does he want us to observe the commandments? This is so beautiful that you may live. Just that. He just wants you to live. He doesn't want you to drag through the gospel. As so many people drag themselves through life, they don't enjoy it. They only think wrong thoughts. They don't know the joy of helping other people. The joy of saying no to any devilish offers made to you. No, I don't do wrong things. Come on, no. I am of Jesus. I have a commitment to him. Then you live. Otherwise, you don't live. The opportunity comes. You let it go away. And then you say, oh, I've missed it. Why well, didn't I understand it? God wants to prepare you to take possession of all the things our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us, that you may live, and what else? And multiply. This is huge, brethren. Some people are not multiplying or increasing. We have to multiply. And there is more. And go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. The land is there. And some people cannot enter it. The gospel is the land of the promise. Some people have been here for ages, here and in other churches, praying, singing, but they keep sinning. They still live in poverty. They're still addicted. And in fact, they will never succeed if they don't do what is written here and go in and possess the land. Some go in the land, but don't possess it. They accepted the gospel. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They even do God's work, but they don't possess God's promises, not even the ones that provide them with pleasant benefits in the eyes of those who are in sin that cause them to realize that they don't need to sin and that now they can live in holiness and also the ones that cause them to be prosperous, that cause them to have a beautiful family, life, a blessed one. I remember when I was little in my neighborhood, 
My mother and other women were talking. One asked the other, doesn't he speak to you? And I thought, he who? No. He gets up in the morning and it seems I don't exist. He has his breakfast and then goes to work. At lunchtime, he comes home to have lunch. He sits at a table, eats, and doesn't even say thank you for the good food. Then he goes back to work. And the women were nodding their heads like this. I was shocked by that. I knew those people. They were our neighbors. In the afternoon, he comes home to drink some coffee. Then he comes to dinner. And at night, at night, he lays down beside me. And it seems to be dead. Nothing happens. <laughs> some people don't possess the land, brethren. We have to possess the land. The land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. To the Hebrews, it was Canaan. What about us? It's the gospel, the fulfillment of the Lord's promise. The Lord Jesus said that many kings and priests and prophets desired to see the things that we can see, but they didn't. But today, some people can't see it either. And why can't they see it? Just because of what is written here. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. Now comes an explanation as to why he wants you to observe them. It's not that God is demanding being and he wants to his servants to wipe the floor with their tongue. No, he's saying that there are many things that we must be careful to observe. What is it? The commandments, we must fulfill them. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord, this is so strong, that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob's, our fathers, not only the Hebrews' fathers, but our fathers in faith, men who a long time ago, around 4,000 years ago, overcame all ordeals, believed in God, and attained the promise of the Lord. Let me pray now, God. We have to go in, Lord. We do acknowledge that you created us with a composition of trillions of cells. Some people say a hundred trillions. And just as you created trillions and trillions of stars, you created planets, and you know all of them by name, you know our cells by their name. And you know in which of those cells an incurable disease is now being developed. But you have the power to clean those cells, to clean each one of them in the blink of an eye, just because you are God. And you are saying you shall not live if you don't have the commandments and fulfill them. We want to do it, Lord. God, David, summed it all up by saying, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Our trillions of cells, our dreams too, and desires, our inborn abilities that still haven't shown up because we are not serving you. They have to flourish, God, and they need to go into war so that we may be turned into people who glorify your holy name because of all that's within us. God, look at those who are sick now. There are so many sick people. Look at those who are troubled and tormented. Many feel this way. Save those people now. Heal them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Look up at me. I want to pray now for those who have come to receive my prayer. If your problem is in your soul or in your body, pain in your soul, sadness, anguish, distress, melancholy, affliction, some are even considering doing something crazy or a physical problem, any sort of pain, a consequence, an after effect of suffering. So I ask you to stand up and I'll pray for you now. You have 10 seconds to stand up. If you take longer, you don't believe in what we will do and now you won't receive your blessing. Bow your head and close your eyes now. Focus your faith. When I finish praying, do not sit down. God will walk in our midst and will heal you now. After that, testify it so that the devil won't take what is yours. The seed will fall by the wayside of the joyful road. But if you don't pick it up, the enemy snatches it from your hand. God, 
I enter into your presence now in order to pray for the people who have hernias in their body, Lord, and lumps too, who have tumors, who have illnesses that have grown and developed and that have been bothering them and that should not be in their body, such as pains, Lord, after effects from a fall, a simple fall that left after effects or complicated things such as a stroke, God, a complete contamination of their bodily system that caused it to be completely affected by sequelas. But God, I will cast it out as to the soul issues. Some souls are held captive in the enemy's hand and they can't have a happy life. So now I paralyze all those evil actions. I expel them now and I command, O oh, spirit of anguish, of sadness, of suffering, I command you, go from their bodies now. Devil, you are bound now. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, let go of their life now. Be delivered, my friends. God, I declare that those who prayed with me are healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. Look at me and be bold now, brethren. Do now what you couldn't do before. I challenge you to do it. What is it that you could not do? If you couldn't hear, cover the good ear and listen with the one that was deaf. If you were unable to stretch your arms like this, twist your hands. You couldn't raise your arms up high or bend your knees. You couldn't bend your legs or you could not walk. Do what you couldn't do before. Check to see if the evil is gone now. Look for your blessing for your miracle. Who can tell me that Jesus has just healed you? That your soul was sad but not anymore. Your body was aching. You were feeling pain because of a disease but not anymore. Now you feel free. Who can declare that all evil is gone. Raise your hands in the name of Jesus. Real quick, I see so many people. I ask everybody now to take possession of the blessing that's in your life. You, what happened, sister? Anguish, pastor. Is it gone now? In the name Glory of to God. Jesus. You, what happened, brother? Pain in my chest. Amen. Glory to God. And you, sister? I was feeling weak and pain in my legs. Is it all gone now? It's gone. Amen. Next Glory to, to God. God. And you, what happened? Pain in my chest. Amen. I was feeling anguish. Glory to God. There are more people. What was the problem? That sister over there, what what happened? In my soul. In your soul. Are you yes. joyful now? Yes. God is healing now. Who was feeling pain in their back and you couldn't move? So move now. If you were feeling pain in your knee as well, move your knees. Possess your blessing now. If you couldn't stand on one leg, do that now. And you turn your feet to the left and to the right. You couldn't move them up and down. Move your feet now. Who else, you? What? Over there, sister. Anguish and sadness. Is it gone now? It's gone. That's sister beside her. Pain in my body and sadness in my soul, Dr. Swatis. Amen. Swartis. Glory to God. Up in the gallery, what happened, brother? Pain in my foot, Dr. Swartis. I had it for four days, but Amen. now it's gone. I began by casting lumps out and hernias. Hasn't any abnormal growth gone to from any of you? Have you checked it? Sometimes people are so skeptical that they don't check to see if it's gone for fear that it will still be there and it will be. You, what happened, sister? Pain in my back, doctor. Already gone. It's pain. gone. And you? I was feeling pain in the side. It was burning. I could barely move like this. Now, thank God Pains are being healed. You, my friend. I was feeling pain in my back and so much sadness. Uh-huh. Now it's gone. Thanks be to and God. And you? I was feeling pain in my back. It's gone. Thanks be to God. Glory to God. Who else now? Who was feeling pain in their hands but is free now? Now you can move them. You, what happened, sister? I didn't. I have no, I have no disease, but I wanted to give testimony of three blessings. Uh -huh. I had a lump here, look, for around three years. And at the same time, I had a buzzing in uh -huh. my ear. And when I was watching you on TV, the um, glass of water. On Speak Up yes, Friend. Speak Up Friend. That's right. The lump in my head and the buzzing were gone. And the second, we have to be quick okay. now. And a coughing. 
I coughed so much and I took lots of medicines to no avail. And after you prayed, I was healed. It was gone. And the Thanks third. be to God. The third, um, let me remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was these two. Um, I think I mentioned it. The coughing, about the coughing, uh, the lump, and the buzzing in my ear. The buzzing in your ear. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, and you, brother? I have a herniated disc, wear and tear in my hips and in my knee. Yeah. And I was in a lot of pain, but after the prayer, I'm feeling well. Can you move your knee? Yes, thank the Lord. Why are you still holding the cane? Because I've grown used to it after 30 years. Walk without it after 30 years. I Go. was suffering so much from this, you know. Go, take a stroll in the name of Jesus without the cane. Go, take a walk. If God healed you, you are healed, brother. God has delivered you, so you're free. And once God blesses you, you are blessed. Walk firmly now, you are healed. Walk firmly and raise your knees and march on. Yes. Isn't it amazing? After 30 years, brethren, turn around now and go. Yes. How, how's that song, Marcio? Esse Deus é tremendo, esse Deus é tremendo, esse Deus é demais. Ele salva, ele cura, ele faz maravilhas e faz muito mais. Se quer ser feliz, deixe agora esse mundo de horror. Venha pra cá, venha pra cá, venha conhecer o meu Salvador. Ele é demais, ele é demais. Cura o inferno e expulsa Satanás. Ele é demais, ele é demais. Cura o inferno e expulsa Satanás. Amen. What's your name, brother? My name is Forisvaldo Rodriguez. So you've used what? a cane for 30 years. For 30 for years. For 30 years. Show me how you walked I with walked it. like this. For 30 years. 30 years. Put it over your shoulder now. Jesus has healed you. Walk freely now. Keep walking. Glory to God. You may be seated, brethren. This is the God we believe. Now, let us watch the real life drama, shall we? Nilza was diagnosed with herpes zoster, also known as shingles. The symptoms are skin rash and blisters in most parts of the body. I had it recently in 2017, between August and September. I started to experience a painful sensation as if I had a serious problem in my kidneys. And the pain went up, it radiated to this part of my body, you know. It appeared in between my ribs. It lodged in a nerve of my ribs. Then it started to develop, and it caused an unbearable pain. My mother had always been a lively woman, became listless, she couldn't develop her work, she couldn't even attend church. We always prayed to God, and we entered into His presence to ask Him to heal her. I underwent a treatment and it was very rigorous actually. I took more than 700 pills until I was deemed free from that virus. However, it is so aggressive that it actually leaves. After effects, it leaves a type of a, of a, of a scar. I was not completely free because this after effect causes such a strong pain that I even thought I was having a heart condition. The possible resources that she could have used were completely used. And then while watching the Faith show, we heard Dr. Suarez would be in Curitiba on a certain day of the month. We understood that God wanted to attend that service. I ordained my healing in the name of Jesus. I was there to be healed. And on that very day Dr. Suarez came to town, I was feeling so much pain. First off, Dr. Suarez preached the word. Then at the moment of prayer, my mother stood up. Dr. Suarez called people to draw near him, all those who were feeling some pain. And my mother immediately went there and received the prayer. And then the pastor Fernando joined him in prayer. After the prayer, Nilza noticed she was no longer feeling that unbearable pain. 
I testified of my healing at that moment. I had herpes zoster. Uh -huh. And this disease causes a lot of pain, especially here in this region. Today I was feeling so much pain. I have a relieving plaster here. Thank God the pain is gone. I can breathe well. It was difficult for yes, you to it breathe? Was, but not anymore. In the name of Jesus. At the moment she received her healing, she's fine. She does her things by herself. She's independent as she has always been. My mother will turn 67. Now she's back to normal, right? She can do her things, the things she does. She goes out and she goes to work normally. She goes to church as well. It's a victory. Now I don't need to take any medications anymore. I have thrown the plaster in the trash can. I don't feel pain anymore. I don't have any after effects. Today she's healed for the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus. So what I want to say to all the women of my age is that they can be very healthy senior citizens with faith, with resolve. Have no doubts, believe, because the blessing I was given will be given to you as well. Oh, glory to God. This is so beautiful. What happened there, brethren? When the Lord works, He works on the trillions of cells that we have. Doctors say that the herpes zoster virus is the virus of chickenpox that lays dormant. When the immune system weakens, the virus wakes up and it happens. It may appear in some parts of the body, keeping them from using even the toilet. This virus can also do, it's awful, but once God heals you, you've healed and Jesus had already borne our illnesses and infirmities. We have to believe. If it returns, she says she won't accept it. Didn't God heal her when she was suffering? So she's healed now. She's taken possession of her blessing. We must become true disciples of Jesus. Next Sunday, on the 8th, we will have the Holy Supper here, and it will be an amazing blessing. There will be seven services at 7, 9, 11 a.m. and 2, 4, 6, and 8 p.m. I will be there at 7, 9, and 11, at 2, and at 4. Pastor Jaime will be there at 6 and 8 p.m. Each meeting begins 20 minutes in advance. Saturday will be the Saturday of wonders, and God will bless us. Let's now go to the Open Your Heart segment in the name of the Lord Jesus. Dr. Suarez, a big group of people has persecuted and troubled us every day by sending us messages, calling my husband, threatening us and saying awful things, besides slandering us. They have cast sorcery spells against my family. We have made police reports, but not even the police can deal solve the problem. Besides the situations that have tormented us, there is a person who works with me. I still haven't found who they are. But he or she is always spreading things about my life and about my family. This situation worries me so much because of my children and my husband. Please help me, Dr. Suarez, because I just can't put up with it anymore. The point is that you're making wrong decisions. I've never heard of making a police report against sorcery spells. Our police do not work against witchcraft, but rather the Lord's police force. Talk to God and don't believe you'll be reached and you won't. Numbers 23, 23 says, For there is no sorcery against Jacob. You have to pray for God to have mercy on them. So you want them to be in jail because they work for the devil. <laughs> It's never going to work. You have to set them free because they're captive of the devil. So do help them. Come to church, believe in Jesus and change your life in the name of Christ. I want to announce that on Wednesday I will be in the city of Belo Horizonte at 9.30 a.m., 2 and 7 p.m. at 1005 Andradas Avenue. Brethren, in three meetings, I will see the Lord God working. Rest assured, it will be a blessing. And on Friday, I will be in Madureira in Rio, next to Tang to the Mall, next to the BRT, in the name of Christ. Join us, it will be a great blessing. God will be glorified in the name of Jesus. Um, let me talk about Grace TV. We won't have the Grace TV moment today because I will talk about it. Dear brethren, there is nothing better. Well, those 
who watch the channel that broadcast immoral soap operas ridden with lust and lewdness and other temptations that are sinning just like them. They have been dominated by them there. They are harboring wrongful thoughts. Immoral movies take you to the filthiest dens of the world. Subscribe to Grace TV with 11 evangelical channels. The, fi the fee is five times lower than the competition, and they don't have the evangelical channels. We have a wide range of channels except for immoral or violent channels. channels. So I urge you to take this flyer home. You no need to rush. If you want to subscribe right now, then do it. Return this part and you will receive a phone call from us so that the God cable can be installed. But if you take it home, do that and pray to God saying, God, I want to be a true disciple. My household and me shall serve the Lord. Is it good or not? If it feels good, make sure to call this number and you at home can call us right now. The local code is 27 plus 21911 The local code 27 plus 21 9115676 or make your request through the internet our website is on gracesouthafrica.com or send us a message to whatsapp the number is 27 plus 0794969037 and say tell me more about grace tv and we'll call you to talk about it and it will be a blessing for your home now let's pray together. I would like you to stand up so we can pray. Oh, brethren, the Lord has healed today, so why wouldn't he heal you now? But do not turn back today. You could stand, so just believe, and you won't leave this place. No, the way you arrived here before. That brother who walked without the cane must keep in mind, I will walk without the cane. I'll get stronger and stronger. Keep marching. God is blessing you. Believe the Lord will heal you. I start by saying, God, I pray for all those who are at home. Brethren, this is the time. I'm here now praying and we will cast all evil out. God, we heard in your word today exactly what we needed to hear. And I rebuke all evil in the life of those people. And I command, go in the name of Jesus Christ.